All right, so welcome back again. And this time, this is our introduction to Max QDA. There are several types of qualitative data software, all right? There's NVivo, Atlas TI, there's the free one called Weft. Uh, so for me, I've decided to use Max QDA after using all of those types of um, qualitative data software. Why? Because it's more affordable for students. I think for students, um, you can buy this for uh, 2,500 for a two years usage um, if you share it with another person. So it's a total of 5,000, you divide it into two. But anyway, I'm not here to sell Max QDA. I'm here to teach you how to use it. Um, so what do we exactly do with a Max QDA? Um, these are the objectives of my um, of my training for today. I am not going to cover all the parts of Max QDA because that takes actually two days of workshop. Um, but since I have a few minutes with you and you may need just basic um, processing of Max QDA, then this should work for you. Now, uh, we I will be hoping to accomplish point one to 13. Okay, that's um, first, what do we do with Max QDA? You have your research question, meaning your research project. And so the things that you could do with Max QDA is that you can present the results, you can analyze, you could code the segments and the text, build categories, read and interpret the text. I will be uh, showing you how to do these things point by point, so don't feel overwhelmed. Sorry, if you're hearing my son doing a mon monkey sound, he has like a class right now, so you have to pardon me for that. Okay, so first thing to do, oh, please open your Max QDA. And uh, the moment you open your Max QDA, you will be uh, shown this type of an interface. This is where it all begins. You will have to use a username, maybe your name, your project name, whichever. And then um, after that, you're going to um, create either, you, you can either create a new project or you can open a project. If you're still exploring Max QDA and just want you know to play around it, you can open examples and they will give you um, this um, examples uh, that you could play with. But if you're already geared towards like I want to use my own transcripts and such, you can um, create a new project. If there's already an existing project that you would like to open, you open the project. All right. I hope that part is clear so far. Now, when you open Max QDA, the moment the project opens, you'll be you'll be met by four inter um, four um, sections of the interface. This this section is all about the documents. Documents meaning the data that you're going to upload. This could be in the form of a file, a PDF, a Word, an Excel, a picture, a video, whatever you like in the world that will, that can be uploaded in a Max QDA. Can you upload a PDF file and then code it? Yes. Um, so whatever file, that's the beauty of this. Whatever file you have, you can um, upload it and use it here. Hang on. Okay, the second uh, part of the interface is your code system. Here is where you're going to create your codes. Here, here is where you can manipulate your codes. This third part is where you will see the consent the content of your file. So once you click your file, it, here in uh, in window three, that is where you will see uh, the contents of your file. You, that is where you read your file. Now, uh, later on, when you already have your file and your codes, you can actually click on a code and you will see here what part of um, that file has the codes. You can see the codes running right here. Okay. so. It's hard to imagine right now, but don't worry, we'll get there. Now for the display option, what if you're not yet, you're still, you're not doing retrieving of the segments yet because you're just in the process of coding. You can click this and it will turn off so that you will only have, sorry, you will only have uh, three parts, three parts to your interface, okay? You can click this out, and then you don't have this. If you if you're not interested in seeing any of this, you just you just need to click them out to focus on one uh, on whichever window that you would like to be open. Okay. 
Now, how do you upload a document? You will see, um, for example, here, you will, this is your interface for, for the home background, right? So here you have the word import on the top, right? So there you could get your document. So the document system, you have, you have two parts of the document system. One is the documents, that's where you're gonna put your, um, literally your files. And then the sets is where you can compile several documents based on the criteria that they have. For example, you're saying all about age. So uh, you could put the documents together, create a, a set and say, age so that's that's one group um but this is something that i don't usually use i just focus on the documents part because that is enough for me in my research so um i'm not going to teach you about sets today i'll i'll just be focusing on documents part so how do you uh start with this first thing to do is to create a new document group so you need to put documents that are to be uh, that are um, parallel in one document group. Why? Because so someday, soon enough, if you want to compare one document group from another document group, this will be very helpful. Is this something that is, um, um, are you following the idea here? <laughs> I hope your Max QDA is open so that you can follow through the idea. So um, again, you can upload an entire document group. If you have in your computer a saved folder of um, a set of documents, then you can you, uh, upload. You can upload that entire set of documents uh, and put them in the new document group. Here is the import documents uh, part, okay? Now, this is what I was telling you about. Um, this is the document browser. You will see here that um, the transcript is available and that these are the codes. It's color coded already. You will be assigning color per code to help you uh, visually see this better. So uh, once you're done uh, coding, you can retrieve them and see uh, what part of the statement has been coded. For example, you can also have overlaps of codes, all right? In qualitative research, it's very important for you to understand that a sentence does not only mean one thing. A sentence could have multiple meanings. And so what you can see here is that from the paragraph, um, which was stated by R, there were several codes here, overlapping codes, actually. So it's something that you could also um, be mindful of when you try to code your data set already. Now, how do you create codes? Um, from the code system, you can create, this is, the, this is the icon for creating codes. And so the moment you click that, you will be given an interface of this, okay? You'll be given an interface. This is where it gets a bit um, daunting first. When you're starting your, your usage of Max QDA, people immediately give up at this stage because they say it's too difficult, it's too uh, toxic. Um, but I assure you, once everything is clear, once all your codes are ready, it's so beautiful because you just keep on reading the text and then coding your uh, coding away. So this is how you create codes. So when you, when you click this icon, the create codes, what you will be uh, shown will be a dialog box of a new code. And then you can type in what is the title of the code you want. And then you can assign a color and then what is this code memo? This is very important. Whenever I train my uh, my research assistants, I tell them that you have to be um, you have to fill in the code memo for your benefit. Why? It guides you on what this code on the limitations of this code. For example, you could say that money and financial issues would be likely to overlap. You know, your your this is more like your. Um, definition of terms, you could put it there. You could also put there the scope and limitation of that code. And so what will be the beauty of this? When you're already in the process of writing your paper, you can just copy this side and then put it on your paper. In your definition of terms, copy, paste. In your um, scope and limitation, copy, paste. You already have it and you are sure, um, you are sure that 
you have coded your transcript properly and aligned it with what you're discussing in your significant, I'm sorry, uh, aligned it with your um, discussion of scope and limitation and definition of terms. In short, you're not, you're not going to be uh, committing any mistake of um, any mistake of inconsistency because what you wrote in your memo actually happened during your coding and that's also what's present in your written paper. Okay, so once you're done with that, you click OK, the code is created. Now, there is also what you call as highlighting, okay? Um, so highlighting is when you read a text and then you feel like this text is important, so you highlight, oh, sorry, <laughs> of course I'm not using Max PDA right now. So you highlight it with whatever color rep is best representing for you. I don't usually do the highlighting though, so it, it <laughs> I think some old habits really die hard. So as a um, as a researcher, sometimes I'm pressed with with time. So I don't go for the highlighting anymore. I go directly to coding. I see a sentence. I highlight. I I um I I'm gonna use the word highlight, but I'm not gonna use this highlighting term things. I would um uh, put my cursor there, um and then click the code and then code it immediately. Okay, so how do you code? There are three ways that you could code in uh, Max QDA. One is um, you create the codes, just like what I showed you earlier. You create the codes, and then when you read through the text, you can um, click on the, that code and then click this, it immediately codes it. Or you're reading, when you're doing open coding, you're reading the text and you saw a uh, an, a point that is very important, but it's not present in the codes that you already created. So you can do code with a new code. So you click it, you do the same process again, and then you have the new code and the text that you've highlighted becomes coded. There is also what you call as open coding mode. Here, I'm sorry, uh, code in vivo first, uh, code in vivo. What happens with code in vivo? Here, the, the words that you've highlighted, when you click code in vivo, it becomes the actual code, okay? You don't have to create any codes anymore. It becomes the actual code and you can use that over and over, okay? Now, when you say open coding mode here, I rarely use this. Um, what you do is that um, uh, you, are, um, you are ready to create new codes every stage of um, the reading. So uh, in, in short, there is a, um, there is an, uh, when you click on this, it immediately allows you to code um, new codes. Okay, but most of the time I just use um, these three items here. I also do not use the emoticode. I, I just don't know how to um, make sense of it, but some of my fellow researchers use emoticode because it, um, it can provide feelings, feelings uh, on a text. For example, you'd like to register that during that time, the participant was um, crying. So you put an emoticode on that highlighted text. Oh, another thing. What if you uh, wrongly coded something? You can just undo the code. One thing you have to remember about Max QDA is that this is a database. So there is no save function. It immediately gets saved every step of the way it saves itself it's a database okay so um if you erase something it has multiple prompts asking you are you sure you want to erase this because the moment you erase it that's gone there's no way of going back okay so this is what i've just explained to you a while ago um and with new code in vivo and such i've also explained to you the importance of doing a memo now let's go to how you start your analysis. How do we do the analysis? Before you can do your analysis, the first thing to do is to activate the codes. So you will, these are for example, the, the documents that you have, you have to right click on it and then click activate the document. When you activate the document, it will turn up red like this. 
And the moment it's read, it's ready to give you whatever you like. Do you want lexical analysis? Do you want to compare this document? Do you want to retrieve the codes from this document? In short, you can work with this document. Can you activate multiple documents? Yes. Can you activate multiple um, folders? Yes. So once you've activate, uh, activated, for example, that the, in that context, the, the file of Riley, what you will get would be, um, and then you activate another code. So you have, for you to make an analysis, you have to activate the document and you have to activate the code that you want to see. So here uh, you have, when, when the person activated the document and the code, what they got was this. These are the highlighted, um, highlighted parts of that interview. These were the coded segments of that interview. And if you remember the, the windows, right? This is already on the retrieve segments. This is window number four. Next part. One of the powerful tools of Max QDA, one of my favorites, lexical search. You already know a particular word. For example, you went in the field and then you heard a word said, and that was so important for you. You took note of it. You just can't pinpoint where was it? Who said that? How many times did it come out? All you have to do is use the lexical search function of Max QDA, and you will be prompted with this, okay? Uh, lexical search is a part of the analysis um, um, analysis tab. So once you click on it, you can write the word that you're trying to find. Of course, remember the document should be activated. So you click on this, you run the search, and then you will be given all the documents that had the word family, for example, family here, all the documents that had the word family, how many times the word family came out, all of those will be uh, given to you through the lexical search. Now, another way to do analysis in Max QDA is to do code matrix browser. What is this? This is when you want to compare who among the people you've interviewed said the most about, let's say, this particular codes. So for example, in this code, uh, your main code, your actual code is day-to-day -day issues. Your subcodes are emo uh, emotions, education, whatever, whatever. These are the documents, Teresa, Joanna, John, Kim, whatever. Now, you would notice that Teresa did not have much to say, all right? She did not have much to say about this day-to-day -day issues. Who had the most issue? The, most, the person with the most issue was John. John had all kinds of issues, right? Um, who had the least kind of issue? It was Kim. And if you want to do a gender representation here, you would notice that um, two out of um, two out of three men had more issues, right? Compared to the ratio of women. So more men had issues about this. You could already say that as part of your analysis. Do you, do you see the beauty of this? Ang hirap, no? In in if we are in um if we are doing this in a face to face context, it would have been easier. Kasi pa ikot ikot ako nyan sa inyo, and then I would I would see whether you're seeing it, right? And you would say, yeah, I figured it out. And that's something that I miss doing at uh, trainings for Max PDA. Apparently now I'm just gonna imagine that you're saying, yeah, I see it now. Notice you were just coding. You were just coding their sentiments, right? You did not see immediately these kinds of variables that, ah, oh, most men, there are more men who have issues than women. All right. And if you think about it, kung, kung my age factor, like Teresa is, I mean, Teresa is older, Kim is older, uh, Vincent is older, you could even say, and we also noticed that people who were a bit more older had less issues. Are you correlating variables? No, but you're seeing trends from the behavior of the people through their responses. This is the beauty of Code Matrix Browser. Now, I said let's do a hands-on. It's um, 217. I'd like, um, these are the things that I'd like you to do. To create a project, upload documents, create codes, generate lexical analysis, 
generate word cloud. But I'm also going to teach you how to do Twitter in a while. Okay, so let me now stop this part and share to you my max QDA. Do, do we have questions first before I move forward? Do you have questions? <laughs> Any questions? As of the moment, ma'am, I think uh, we don't have uh, questions. I just finally saw a face. Hi, sir, Elner. Um, how, how's Max QDA for you? Have you tried it ever? I actually, I have never tried it before, but I find it interesting because it is behavioral. Behavioral. We are uh, understanding the behavior of a group. Okay. Uh, I hope that you could uh, try to do qualitative research um, using this someday. Um, now let me uh, let me show you my Max QDA. Is is uh, Sir Philip around? Philip uh, Hernandez, are you here? Wala daw. Wala. All right. Uh, Froilan Alipo also not here. Um, Antoinette Kwan. Okay. The reason why I'm asking is because they're my collaborators for this project and I'm about to show our project to you guys. Uh, don't worry, I've secured consent on this uh, from, um, from participants. Um, all right. Okay. Ito pong itsura ng Max QDA sa totoong buhay. Can you see it? Can you see my Max QDA? Yes, ma'am. Yes. All right. So, ito po yung current project namin that's funded by Brown University. And um, ang in-explore po namin dito ay kung paano, how are community leaders um, interacting with um, military organization representatives, civil military organization representatives. So, what we have here are three sources of data. Um, one group from um, Kaloocan, another group from Navo, uh, I'm sorry, this one is Kaloocan, this is Navotas, and this is Baseco. These are representatives, uh, these people are representatives of these organizations. So you would notice here that uh, we uploaded it, I uploaded it based on based on organization. Because the analysis is based on organizational comparison. Kaya nga, it depends on what do you intend to do with your data. Is it a gender-based comparison that you want to do? Is it organization-based? Is it age-based? It depends on what you want to compare. And, and so that, that will be the basis of your arrangement of the data. So when you click on this, you would notice that these are the people who participated here. They're arranged um, randomly. You can arrange this alphabetically if you like but it doesn't matter to me anyway so um i've put them there and so this were all coded how many codes did we make for for this um number of people a total of 1603 um coded segments were created meaning we were able to tag 1603 statements from there and how did we tag them these are the codes that we have uh, so, makikita nyo dito how uh, nitty gritty coding is. Okay, so you would notice that um, here it's based on questions. Okay, now your codes could be based on questions or it could be uh, random. Okay, but most definitely not random. Hopefully, why? I'm hoping that when you create your codes, it will be on themes. But since our questions are already based on themes, we decided to code them based on um, questions, right? Organization's core, membership, positions, current role. So, okay, so here, you notice that the major code has subcodes, right? For example, what are their sentiments and recommendations for the group? There is the subcode on unity. There's subcode on collaboration. There's uh, having one objective and then good housing. Okay, so these are the codes that we have. Um, now, how do you make sense of this? For example, um, I want to see um, how how do I uh, make sense of this? For example, I want to see how many people. Uh, I mean. I want to compare how these three groups, um, 
how their um hang on no not participation okay i want to see what is their what are the differences in their vision as an organization so the first thing that i will do is i will activate how do i activate the documents you just right click and then you say activate all documents and now when you look at it, every document in the in the folder of Candila is activated. And then you activate back as well, activate. Or an easier way is that, I don't know, uh, I'm using a MacBook, so I click command and then I click on S on this item. So it's now, um, it's now uh, activated as well. So all of my folders are activated. And then now I'd like to activate um, vision because it's the code that I want to make sense of. Pare pareho kaya sila ng vision. Let's see. Okay, so I've activated vision. You would notice that here is a sample um, is a sample document, and here you would notice the the ten coded segments that from seven documents and three document groups. So out of these three sets of document groups, there are seven documents who answered the question of vision, okay? So there are 10 coded segments. Now let's see how that fares. This is one of the most beautiful part of Max KDA, the analysis part. And this is something that I usually use for um, creating analysis for my qualitative research. You can compare cases and document groups. Click on this, you have two options. What do you want to have? Do you want the numbers? Or do you want the words? Let's use the numbers first. Okay, so here you get a dialogue box. I'm hoping you can follow. Yes, you can. Um, anyway, I've recorded this um, lecture and I'll upload it in a YouTube um, platform so that you can access it again if you wanna rehash this lecture. So what do you do? I could insert the activated documents, but if I do that, it will look like this. So since what I want to do is compare per group, not per person, per document, what I will do is drag it instead. Okay, I'll drag Candila, I'll drag B BEC, I'll drag SNKB, okay? So now the, the analysis will be per cluster. And then what do I do? I'll insert the activated codes. Remember, you cannot do any analysis without activating the document or the codes. Remove the vision because that's not, um, that has zero anyway, that's just a qualifier. So now we will see how different they are. Click OK. And there you go. You have, can you see it? Hello? Yes. <laughs> yes. You can see here that in, in numerical form, you can see here that, look at this, quite interesting. You can see here that um, for Candila, their main, um, their, their main uh, vision would be divided into four categories, right? It's peace, welfare, progress, and unity. For Beck, which is um, an, a religious organization, they don't care about peace, welfare, progress, pagkakaisa. What they care about is the community of believers. Notice the samahan na nagkakaisang kababaihan ng Baseco, a women's group in an urban poor community. What is their aspiration? What is their vision? To have progress within their society and to have, um, what's this? Welfare, is it welfare? Ah, welfare and progress. Okay, so this is how they responded. This is how they responded towards the question of what is the vision of your organization? Do you see it? Now, how do you, how do you now uh, use this? You can, um, so you wanna export this, right? What you can do is, I, what I usually do is that I want to export it using a, uh, an Excel. So you can click on the Excel sheet here and do you, do you still see the export uh, dialogue? Yes, 
Yes. Yes. Okay. You will see um, this dialog box right here. It says export. You can rename it, whatever name that you would like, and then put it on your saved documents. Okay. So, pag nagawa nyo na po yan, lalabas yan as an Excel file. Now, um, let me show you something very interesting. Um, Hindi ko pala mahanap bigla, no? Okay. Um, what can happen with this? You can create graphs. Okay? You can create graphs using your Excel. You can do a whole lot of things. But what you already have right here would be an interesting display of how what kind of responses do they have alam mo na that when you write this qualitative data you would say majority of the responses of the participants from the women's group of baseco um, look into welfare and progress that is the main core of their vision as a as a unit as a group this is different from beck whose uh, group had um was more oriented towards let's say a uh, religious um, organization. Let me hang on. Can you hang on, please? I want to show you the the draft that we have on this. Okay. Um, I'll stop share my new share. Okay, new share, Microsoft Word. Can you see this Microsoft Word? Yes, yes ma'am. All right, perfect. Yes, Using the qualitative data that was transformed into some type of a numerical context, ito po ang, uh, ito yung working paper namin. Hang on. Oh, organi organizational vision. Through the Excel document that I got, nakagawa kami, kasi automated naman, di ba, sa Excel, you can create your own graph there. Nakagawa kami ng ganito. Look at that. Uh, we can put it in graphs now that um, for a community of believer, it's all orange. That means it was all on back. Okay? So, pwede mo na siyang i-represent yung data mo that is qualitative. Uh, pwede mo na rin siyang i-represent through graphs like this. Now, some qualitative researchers is gonna say, bakit may mga graphs ka? Sila po yung medyo traditional na qualitative researcher. For more progressive qualitative researcher, we're going to say, we have graphs because we were able to find trends in the responses and the trends in the responses um, featured this as a distribution okay you're not trying to make a qualitative study quantitative that's not the goal here what you're trying to establish here is the percentage of representation the thematized representation of their responses okay so ano pang isang mapupulot nyo sa max qda Oh, di ba meron kang, mer you, you already have this kind of a graph, right? But since it's a qualitative research, of course you want to highlight the statements where these numbers came from. So here, this is something that you can also get from MaxQDA. I'll show you in a while. Um, you would notice, for example, for Beck, they said, right, that they're just, they're focused on community of believer. What what statements can you possibly use to qualify your findings here of this one? What you can do is highlight this statement. According to one of the members of the study or one of the participants of the study, then you can quote, you can quote this statement, okay? So from, from this uh, percentage of a remark, right, you can qualify that with the actual statement from from the member. And how did you get this? From the quote, uh, from the quote that you've coded. Okay, let's go there. I'll uh, new share. Let's go to Max PDA again. Look at this. Okay, I'll ex I'll exit that part. Remember, we have uh, going back. Remember that we have um, highlighted this, right? We have activated our documents, and we have also. We have also activated vision as a sample of analysis, right? 
And what we did was to compare groups because that's something that we wanted to do. You could also do this for if you don't have groups to compare, you just have people to compare, that could also work. So here, you want to, what we did initially was to do quantitative. How about qualitative? So what we do is that we just click on qualitative. We insert again the groups because we want to do a group, a group analysis, right? Group comparison. Then we insert the activated codes. We just remove the key code, which has no codes anyway. It has zero. You click on OK. And somehow you'll get this, all right? But don't worry about that um, because it, the, the responses are too small, right? So what I usually do is just I click on this interactive code matrix. And once you click Save on that, what you will be um, given will be I'm not sure if you can see this. Um, can you see? Uh, no, you can't. Interactive code here. This is what came out of that activity that we just did. Can you see this part, the interactive code matrix? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So thank you, ma'am, for <laughs> continuously responding to me. Um, what you will see is the Excel file of the quotes, okay? The quotes per organization, Candila, Beck, San Canaba. <laughs> That's what we call it, San Canaba. But it's a mahan ng kakaisang kababayan ng baseko. And then you would see that for peace, there was one code and it was from Candila. For welfare, there was there were two codes, one from Candila, one from the baseko. For progress, there were two coded segments, two coded segments, both from two organizations. For pagkakaisa, there was one code and it was all on Candila. And then for community believer, there were two codes and they were from Beck. These are the statements that you could highlight while writing your paper. Okay? If you don't want to show the quantitative side of your or the numerical representations of your themes, you can just focus on these highlighted segments in the writing of your paper. Okay? So that is how beautiful um that is how beautiful um max qda can be uh when you're trying to write your paper as long as you've coded properly as long as you've um identified um this um identified your codes properly and the segments now so that's one of the things that we do here another thing is that of code coverage uh i'm I, can you no you can't Resume share, sorry, I cannot resume share anymore. What am I sharing? Stop share, okay. I hope you guys are still awake. Yes, okay. Thank you. I hope our students are still awake. Uh, they're, they're supposedly the beneficiaries of this. Um, the teachers can benefit, of course, and then you just lecture again to your students or they can watch again this video. Okay, so um, another thing that you could do is to do code frequencies, okay? How many, which codes had the most frequency of all time, okay? So let's, let's do that for, um, let's say, um, I want to do it for, nah, forget it. Let's just focus on vision. Let's do a code frequency. Okay, so with code frequency, we'll insert the activated codes. Okay. And here we will see which of the codes was the most important or which of the concept, uh, which of the concepts is the most important among all the activated uh, files among all the participants of the study. And here you see progress as the primary um, reason why they created their group. Progress was the primary reason that they're together as a group. Now, a good part of this code frequency context is that it immediately transforms into a, a graph. So napakadali. Immediately, kita mo na kagad na of all the documents, ang pinaka-importante pala was progress. You can just you can either export, print it already, export it, or uh, if you want uh, an easier route, you can screen capture it however you feel like. But what's important is that you already, you can change the title, by the way, you just double click it. What's important is that you know that by, um, by activating the code, activating the group of people that you want to study, 
uh, that you want to be uh, that you want to analyze that you can find out which is the most important context for them in this context it was progress not peace all right so that's how you do the code frequency as well now another part that i'd like um the lexical search i've already um i've already um discussed that with you for the interest of time we're not going to go to that let me just um let me just go now to twitter kasi ito ang isang bagay na baka interesado kayong gawin so with twitter ay hindi ko kaya mapakita lahat but um with twitter what you will have to do is um sorry um new share hindi ko mapakita kasi that means i have to open my twitter for you which is not going to be a good idea so uh ito po yung mangyayari diyan when you click on twitter right here when you click this one, you will have a dialogue box, this one. So you have to connect your Max QDA to your Twitter account or whatever Twitter account that you've created for your study. And then what you could look, uh, you could uh, assign here all of the, all of these words. So key in the words that are important to you. And then if you want an exact phrase, then exact phrase. You could also put the hashtags. If, if the hashtag is more important for you, you can put the hashtags. And what will happen is that once you click on retrieve, it's like a seven day, uh, seven day gathering of data. Um, you will be given this. You, you'll get the hashtag, the type, if it's a reply, an actual tweet, is it a reply to? How many followers? Okay, that's very important. How many people uh, are uh, uh, this person follows so that you know if it's a bot, you know, if it's an if it's a troll account or whatnot, how many tweets this person made or such, and then the author. Okay, so um, this are this are this is a good example of how you can harvest Twitter information immediately. Uh, it's, it's called data mining, right? So Max QDA already has the feature of data mining for Twitter. Seven days. Um, I, I'm, I'm not sure if it's still seven days or a bit longer now, but during the time that I did this, this was a seven days period. Okay, so that is all about um, what I could share for today uh, regarding Max QDA. Do we have um, questions? Because we're now going to go to your um, breakout session.